All I y'all. Guess what? Hey, Marley. Hi, Marley. Guess what we got? Hi, Marley. Can you say hi? We got a puppy. This is a Valentine's Day gift from my husband. All right, I'm going to pass him off. Ava Dawn. Here we go. Bye, Marley. Say bye. Bye bye. Okay. Thank you. So excited. <clears throat> he is so sweet. And let me. There we go. So sweet. So excited. Um. I don't know. So excited. I don't know. Yeah. I kind of messed myself up when I flipped my phone. Ah, happy Sunday, guys. I love Sundays. We had church today. Love church. And then um, we had a Valentine banquet for our pillars, which is our elderly group over 50 I should say not elderly but oh anybody over 50 and they it was catered and they had a tip jar so like my son and a few others that go to our church that are going to Ireland and England next year um they got to be waiters and waitresses and earn tips to go towards their trip. And it was just so sweet. And then I was the entertainment. Well, I did the entertainment, I, I should say. So I did bingo, Valentine bingo. So it was a lot of fun and the food was fantastic. It was catered, pork loin, and, and I don't know. Anyway, it was a great day. And then of course we got home to a surprise puppy. So. And this puppy is an inside dog. He's a family dog. He will not be hunting. He will not be going outside except with us and to swim and, you know, so we're just so excited. Um, anyway, I am getting into Leviticus and numbers things like that and you know all scripture has its place but I feel like I have to really really strap myself in to Leviticus because when we start talking about the measurements of the temple and everything that goes in it it is it's it's a lot let me just say that it is a lot it's a it's kind of how other people feel about chronicles when they start giving all the the lineages like who had who and how long they lived and who had who and the generations and it's just like oh my word i'm just reading chapters of names well ooh, the laws in leviticus can kind of feel like that in the temple sometimes so i'm having to i'm gonna have to like <clears throat> take it in doses because my brain becomes so overwhelmed with it i like to look at a photo when i'm reading about the temple because I need a visual reference or I just cannot um my husband turned off that light accidentally he forgot oh, he forgot I was walking y'all I cannot I cannot see um it can be a lot turn on the light please Hey, and those lights. Your daddy turned them off. This light right here. And this one. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> oh, I walked around the porch and I walked into pitch black. Anyway, so what I'll probably have to do is read a little bit of it. And then jump to a different part of the Bible and read some because you can just really get bogged down in all the specifics, or at least I do. 
but I do like to look at a photo while it's describing. And I'm like, God, you were like the ultimate interior decorator. Like you really wanted everything perfectly done and made and measured and for your temple, you know? Cause you said, he, he said, I want to dwell among them. Is what he told Moses when he had Moses up in the Mount given in the 10 commandments. He said, I want to dwell among them and I want them to build me a house. Like he wanted to live among us, like in the camp, like he wanted to be, he wanted to be with us so badly. So he's like, you got to build me a house. You got to build me a temple. And we're fixing to get into all of that. So, but what I did write about today, I thought I would mention, um, I read the scripture, I'm still in Genesis, uh, Exodus, excuse me, but I'm nearing the end. And I'm on the part where he talked about, I wrote in my Bible, bribes and bribery. And I was like, man, I wish I would have got, let me go grab my journal because I want to tell you what I wrote. Okay, I'm not going to hold you long. I say that all the time. It really is my goal to get it out and get on with it. So, it's Exodus 23, 8. The scripture I wrote says, And thou shalt take no gift, for the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the words of the righteous. Um, I mean, that's pretty common sense and straightforward. So the thoughts I wrote down was, were, God really did try to cover all bases when dealing with human behavior. This was a lesson in bribes and ethics. It's like God gave the first course of ethics, which is two things I want to point out there was he speaks of wise people and he speaks of righteous people. Because I think that's an important note. It blindeth the wise. So they're not stupid. Like people who are bribed or who fall for bribes or who succumb to that temptation, they're not stupid. They can be wise people. And if you go on, it says, it perverteth the words of the righteous. So even the wisest and most righteous among us can fall into this trap of gifts. And it looks like a lot of different things. Every year at my job, we take ethics courses. Like we have to do trainings every year. And I have a friend who has a daughter or a child in uh, some, some part of the medical community and they have to take ethics courses in some part of engineering. And she said the amount of ethics courses they had to take was astounding. Like it's just one after the other. And it's like, wow. And it's, it is, it's kind of like, well, the higher in positions you get, the more courses you're probably gonna have to take on it. The more money that's involved, the more courses you're gonna have to take on it because it is such an issue. And I know you may say, well, well, maybe you don't, but for those of you who may say, well, this isn't a spiritual issue. It is, and it's straight from the Bible. I just, you know, just I just talk about, you know, living for God is practical. I heard that phrase and it stuck with me. You can be so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. I really try to live for God in the most practical sense because, and I try to teach in that way as well. What good is it going to do me if I talk with fancy words and I talk about only certain aspects of God or living for God and I never get down to the nitty gritty of where we live? I mean, I could talk about clouds and rainbows all day long. I can make you feel good or, you know, like it could be anything. It could just be all spiritual, but we live in the physical too. And we're not just spiritual beings, we're physical beings and we're mental beings and we're emotional beings. So we really need to hit all the bases. Otherwise, we, uh, sorry. Otherwise, if we don't have teaching on all aspects of life, we're gonna be weak. I mean, 
God is telling Moses when he's giving him the Ten Commandments, hey, tell him not to do this. It's a pretty big deal. To me, it's kind of like the Sabbath. I mean, people overlook it. He put it as one of the ten. I think you need to take a load off. You need to rest because when you don't rest, he knew you turned into a different type of person. Stressed people are really not happy people to be around typically. Application. What did I write down? I need to make sure that I don't accept anything that would cause me to overlook behavior that isn't correct. And I told you it can get sticky. I don't think I even want to go into specifics, but you know what bribes are. You know what bribery is. But I do want to say this. It's not always labeled that way. As a matter of fact, I don't think the majority of the time it's labeled. No one comes up and says, hey, do you want to take a bribe? And maybe they do. It's not so far off universe, but for the most part, it's more of a, I scratch your back, you, you scratch mine. I'll overlook this if you'll overlook this. I'll take care of you if I get a cut. I make sure they have a good time because they bring in a lot of money. All of those things are gifts. All of those things pervert judgment. Those things pervert the words of the wise. Those things eliminate a just weight. Because as soon as you start getting kickbacks, then you're no longer making ethical decisions. You're making decisions based upon how it will benefit you and not whether or not it's the right thing to do. And we know that, but do we know that God sees it? Do we know that God is like, no. Do we, do we know that if we don't call it bribery, but it's still bribery, do we know that? Do we remember that? Do we know that when we call in favors, if what we're asking people to do is unethical, that that's against God's law and God's word? Do we know that when we ask someone to overlook something and in exchange we'll give them money or we won't bring up the dirt on them? I mean, that's what this scripture is referring to. You just you have to keep in mind god's created us he knows us inside and out but he had also gotten rid of an entire planet of people who were their thoughts and mind was on evil continually and i think he was like moses <laughs> we need a law for these people otherwise you know i didn't said i wouldn't kill them with water again but like this isn't gonna work so i put for a connecting scripture, there was a lot of connecting scriptures about bribery. There was a lot. And I thought, well, which one do I want to use? So I read them all. And I decided on the soldiers at the tomb. And in Matthew 28, it says, And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel... So this was a decision that wasn't just between one or two in secret. This was elders, I believe, of the religious community. It says, and they gave large sums of money to the soldiers that were supposed to be guarding Jesus' tomb when he was resurrected. And they said... Here's some money. Say. Say. Tell the people that his disciples came and got him at the nighttime and stole him away while you were sleeping. Here. Here is a chunk of change to cover up the truth. That, my friend, is bribery. That's paying someone off. That's hiding the truth and giving someone financial gain in order to do it. And it happened a ton throughout the Bible. 
And then they said, you know, when the leaders hear that you fell asleep, we'll cover for you. Don't worry about that. We'll get you out of trouble. You just, we just need you to make sure you tell the public that his disciples stole his body because we don't need them believing he actually rose from the dead. We don't need them knowing the truth and we're willing to pay you. And they did. You know, I think, I think about that. How many people heard that lie that was conjured up in secret amongst a group of people who wanted the truth to be covered up and were willing to pay for it? But how many people heard the lie and believed it? Sure, we know Jesus. We know Jesus was resurrected. But how many people believed the lie and lost faith in the disciples? How many of them lost faith at all because Jesus was dead and to them? You know, I don't know. I, I'm just saying hypothetically. When things like that happen, there are casualties. There are people who will suffer. There are people who, I mean, we see the truth because we believe God's word and we're looking back and reading it and we know he appeared. But is it possible? I'm asking, is it possible for someone to hear that lie, that fake rumor that was done in secret to cover up the truth and they lost all faith and the disciples in their view lost all credibility and it was never corrected? Did they live far enough outside of town? Did word spread far enough that they never received the correction of it? I always think about things like that because I know it's possible. And the last thing I wrote was, and I'm gonna let you go. We must make sure that this secular concept stays out of the church. We're going to talk about the kingdom. We're talking about the whole church. Bribery has no place in the kingdom of God. Paying someone off to cover up the truth has no place in a child of God's life. Giving people special treatment or advantages because of their paychecks doesn't hold water in God's kingdom. <sighs> we just got to make sure that in the middle that we don't get the world's fingerprints all over us. Because people are looking to us to be examples. And all it takes is one unfortunately not that you can't make it right because you can but just like i said i mean if you allow that in your life it won't be long people know people hear people talk and people hear and you can lose your witness you can lose your credibility you can lose the witness that you had um, but more importantly, it's just unethical. I mean, if you even take away the Lord out of the situation, which I would never want to do, I'm walking with God right now. I'm not trying to remove him from it. But if there's somebody, somebody watching in some weird way that maybe doesn't believe in God or doesn't have a walk with the Lord, this isn't... <laughs> God came up with the first ethics, like I just read them. Everything stems from him anyway. But literally the ethics courses I have to take every year as a public servant, as an educator, it's the same thing. So we all know what's right. Everybody knows the right thing to do, but the world just overlooks it and says, that's just how we do business. It's just how we work. Blah, blah, blah. You, you fill in the excuse. But what I'm saying is we can't let that creep into our lives as people, women and men who love God. We can't allow that to get a foothold in us because that is a witness killer and uh it's just not it's just not right so happy sunday oh i know what else i was gonna say 
it almost makes you not want to accept anything because I've seen this too where someone gives you something or does something really kind for you or whatever and you innocently take it you're like thank you so much that's so kind of you blah 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 and you meant no I mean like you didn't think of anything but there are other people with motives that may look far down the road that you aren't even looking down and you'll be surprised how many of them when caught in dire straits will say do you remember that time I helped you or do you remember that time I gave you this or whatever and you weren't accepting a bribe you weren't you didn't know that this was going to get brought back up but there are people and I'm just saying be careful there are people who do nice things for you just so they can hold them over your head later you don't have to succumb to that you don't you can say, I appreciate what you did, but I in no way accepted that gift or that favor or that whatever in exchange for anything else. And if you thought that's what this was, then I'm really sorry and it won't ever happen again. You do not have to succumb to that. You do not have to feel guilty about that. You do not have to let somebody make you feel guilty about that because that is a back door for bribery. And people do that to innocent people all the time. So I wanted to throw that out there. I wanted to let you know that you do not have to succumb to that. You do not owe people anything. When we give, we're supposed to give out of the goodness of our hearts. We are not giving so that we can put it in our back pocket and pull it out on a rainy day and say, do you remember what I did for you? You owe me. And that's, that is what the world does to people. And we're better than that. I'm done, but I wanted to say that it came to my mind while ago and I just, I was like, I need to get that in there so you can politely decline. So what I'm saying is you don't have to be guilt tripped into taking the bribe or doing it or anything else. You may lose a friend, but how good of a friend are they if they really are going to do that to you? So anyway, I'm done. I'm officially done. I hope you have a fantastic week. I will see you back tomorrow i'm going to snuggle with my baby his name is marley and he's sleeping in our bed and i'm so excited so excited ah have a good week bye you, you read let justice like a river roll again Let justice like a river roll again. You're the God who feeds 5,000 hungry people Who stops a guilty stranger being stoned You're the God who judges us as with fire The justice that you bring is merciful you